Hey, this is Matt Ting from Peak Frameworks, and today we are going to be doing an Excel tutorial where I teach you how to be slightly more efficient and effective at Excel. Specifically, we are going to be looking at the Quick Access Toolbar, which is really the very first thing you should be setting up when you are using Excel to begin with. I'm also going to be walking you through the formatting sheet that I have in every single one of my Excel workbooks. And it just makes me so much faster because I can pull different cell formats as well as cell colors from this sheet. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the Excel workbook in the description below. And now I'm going to jump into the corner of the screen to help you follow along. So the very first thing we actually want to do is make sure our Excel quick access toolbar is properly set up. If this is set up, then your efficiency by itself is already going to go up by, you know, 20 to 30 percent because you're going to be so much quicker and you're going to be able to access commands much more quickly than native Excel allows you to do. So the quick access toolbar is essentially this thing in the top left. It allows us to essentially customize our toolbar so we can have the most frequently used features all up at the top. And we can access these tools through what's known as alt codes. And alt code is essentially a function in all Windows products where you press alt and then these letters pop up. Now when these letters and numbers pop up, it essentially allows you to toggle the next command simply by pressing a button. So for example, if I want to go to insert, I can just press N. And then if I want to make a chart, I'll just press C. And that brings me to the ability to create a column graph. So very easily, I can select all this, do Alt N C and that brings me to a graph and makes it much more quick. Now, the main utility of this is it allows you to not use your mouse. And if you're not using a mouse, you can navigate through Excel much more quickly as well. And that's essentially how people in finance accomplish that task. Now, I don't wanna make a blanket statement that you should never use your mouse. There are some functions like when you're making graphs as well as almost all the time when you're in PowerPoint, you want some control over your mouse, but generally speaking, alt codes are gonna make you faster. Now, the alt codes I would recommend are as follows. They are fonts size, font color, fill color, borders, more borders, and then size and properties. And if that doesn't make a ton of sense to you, it'll make sense as we go through the exercise. But essentially, you're going to be changing font sizes and colors all the time because you're going to be getting data from different files and different formats. And then borders are just a very annoying task to do. I think the number one overall Excel formatting tip I can give you is to always do borders last. And the reason I say this is because borders are kind of sticky. And if I'm constantly moving cells around, meaning that the data is not yet finalized, then I'm gonna have all these random lines everywhere because the borders aren't properly kind of set yet. Now that might not be very clear yet. It'll be clearer once we actually dive into the exercise. So finally, how to do this, you can do Alt F and then T, or you can go to File and then Options. So that brings us to General. We're then gonna go to Quick Access Toolbar right here. And you're gonna want to go from Popular Commands to All Commands and then just look for these different commands right here. I already have them added, and you're probably gonna have to remove some inferior ones that they had by default. But again, I recommend these ones, font size, color, fill color, et cetera. So I will also say that this sheet is heavily inspired by the investment banking training I did, where we were essentially taught to format things as quickly as possible. So we're gonna try to do the same thing. So on this first sheet, and you can download this in the video description, this is kind of the unformatted information. So if you're going to go to the SEC website or Capital IQ, they might give you kind of this unformatted data. It's our job to bring it to this formatted solution. I would say this is much more ready to be presented. If I press Control P, you can see that this is nice and clean. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do Alt W N. That's going to create a new window. And have this one on the right side. Solution on the right side. So on the left hand side, we have the unformatted exercise. So this is what we're going to be working off of, ideally getting to this point. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the grid lines. And it's finance convention to get rid of grid lines because it can kind of obstruct a lot of other borders or other formatting. And it generally it looks unpleasing, as most people would say. So we're going to start by doing Alt W V G that gets rid of grid lines. And I think we can just work our way down sequentially. So the first thing we're gonna do is this border across. So you're already seeing alt codes in action, but I just do alt HBP. And that is a quick way to get to the borders. Now you can either do this or you can do our alt code, alt four, and then P. Either way is acceptable. Both are about the same amount of speed. Next, I'm going to use the quick access toolbar again. 
If I press one, it's gonna bring me to this top, this first command. And you can see, I don't even have to type anything more. It already brings me to the font. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna check this size right here. And you can see at the top it's 12. So I'm gonna do Alt 1, 1, 2. I'm gonna bold it as well. Now the next thing, I'm going to select all of these cells. If I do Alt 3, that brings me to the paint bucket and I want this dark blue. Now another way I can check this, if I go into this cell, I can do Alt 3 and then if I click M for more colors, it's gonna bring up this color pane and it essentially tells me the color of the cell that I'm highlighted. So I press OK and that's gonna bring it into recent colors. So you can see here, it's now in recent colors. Next, I'm gonna keep just going down. I'm gonna do Alt 2 to get into the font color. And there we go. Now the next thing here, we're gonna do Alt HBP again in order to get the top line. We're gonna bold this top row, make another borderline. And you can see how essentially the typical format is to have a line right above a sum. There's a line right above gross profit implying that gross profit is the sum. Most of the time for the big subtotals like gross profit, EBITDA, etc., we are gonna bold it and that's what we're doing here. EBITDA will again bold and margin looks fine. DNA looks fine. EBIT we will bold. EBT we will bold. And you can see net income, there is no net income. So we'll have to do one formula and that's just gonna be EBT summed with taxes. One other small thing that you might not have noticed, but there's a dollar sign row here. Now we don't want dollar sign rows on second rows. We essentially only want them on the top row. The main reason for that is so we don't have like dollar signs repeating all the way down. So I'm gonna take this correct formatting. You can notice there's no dollar signs here. And then paste it. And what I'm actually gonna do, you wanna do control C and then you wanna paste special. Now paste special is Arguably the most important Excel function that you should know. Most people use control C and control V when they're starting, but the problem with that is you're gonna carry all this other information. Every single Excel cell has a bunch of data in it. It's gonna have the format, it's going to have the if it's a formula or not, if it's a value or not. So if you just do control C, control V, for example, if I did this, it's gonna carry over the border, it's gonna carry over the formula. So we need to do paste special to just paste exactly what we want. So here we only wanna paste the format. We definitely don't wanna paste the formula. If I just do control C, control V, it blanks out because it's moving the formula as well. So all I want is the format, control C, select this, Alt E S T. This is one to remember. So that's Alt E S T and that's the format. And I just quickly check to make sure that this cell also has appropriate formatting. So for free cash flow, I'm just going to do sum for these four cells. So that brings me to free cash flow. Now I can tell that something is different because the numbers at the bottom are different. They're extremely different. So when I dive into the actual assumptions, I can see that revenue growth is completely off. And if I just type that in from 25 to 25, it matches completely. So for free cash flow, most of the time, if the final sum is correct, the rest of it is correct. So we can see from 250 building to 610, that's the same in the solution. And for these percentages, percentages are a little annoying. Rather than do our own custom formatting again, which we, we could do, the problem is that it's a little bit more complicated to remember. And that's why I have this formatting sheet. So I'm just going to copy this percentage and then I'm going to paste it here. And again, I'm only going to do Alt E S T. So now you can see all the percentages and we want blue for inputs. Anytime there's an assumption, we essentially want it to be blue. That's also one of the main formatting rules. We want blue for inputs and black for formulas as the starting things you should think about. So we're not done yet. This title is also bolded. And I want to show you custom formatting for years. Now years are an interesting thing because they are both numbers, but oftentimes in finance, you're going to see that they have letters as well. Now the letter here means A for actual and E for expected. So this would be in the future and that this would be something that's already passed. Now the best way to do this is press control one, 
to get back into format cells. I do Alt CC. And I'll show you that one more time. Because when I press Alt CC, Alt C gets me into category. You can see anytime something is underlined, that will tell me what menu I'm toggling. For example, if I do Alt C, that brings me to category. If I do Alt N, that brings me to negative numbers. You can see again right here, this underlined letter tells me where I am in the menu. It's the equivalent of all these letters popping up, except in certain menus, only the underline will show up. So again, I'll do Control-1, Alt-C, and then I can press C again to get to currency. And this is kind of like a standard Windows menu. Now, if I press a letter, it's going to bring me to the option that corresponds to that letter. For example, if I press D, it brings me to date. And if I do C, it's gonna cycle through the Cs. So I'm gonna do custom. Now, what I wanna do here is this is getting into Excel custom formatting, which we will also cover. But for now, I'm just gonna teach you how to do this year function. So we're gonna do the number and that's going to have the entire year. And then I'm gonna do quotations A. And what this is essentially saying is that the letter A is always gonna pop up the end, but it's still a number format. Now, the reason why that's useful for years specifically is because if I do plus one, it's still going to be a number. If I just made it 2020 A and I typed it in, all these things wouldn't work. And that means I would have to manually enter all of the dates. And if I change the years in the future for some reason, then it wouldn't be flexible. So this is an extremely handy tool, making sure that it's still a number. So that's the number sign and then just the letter A. The thing is that these years in the future are expected, they're E. So I'm gonna do the same thing, Alt C, 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 number, sign, and then E. And this is just much nicer now. So now I'm gonna do Control B to just bold it. And the final thing I'm gonna do is create this dotted border. So that's where this is really useful when I press Alt 4. I am going to, I think the border I want is actually not, a, none of these default lines. So I have to go to line style, and then I'm going to select the second one here, I think. So just to do that again, we did Alt 4, and then I'm going to go to Y, because I'm going to line style. So that essentially selects the line style, and then I'm going to do Alt 4 R. And why did I do Alt 4 R? Because that brings me into the borders pane, and then to the right border. So I'm doing a quick scan here, and I think we've got all the formatting so far the last thing we want to do and i would say this is the thing that you can do to make your models look the most correct is to add this print formatting it doesn't make it any more technically correct but it's an industry convention and it just makes you look way more um you know professional so what you're going to do is select the data that you want to cover in this rectangle then you're going to do alt prs then you're going to do one more which you don't have to remember but you're gonna change the view, Alt W I, and that brings you into this cool little print format view. So what we just did finally is to make the print formatting a little more clean. Now, the reason we do that is because when we print it, it means it's going to print the selected information. If I didn't create that, if you had to show it to someone in real life, if you had to print it out, then it would show up with a bunch of kind of misaligned columns or maybe it would spill over to the next page. So I think that's like the last thing you should do that kind of just makes it look a lot more correct and a lot more thoughtful. So I hope this was a helpful tutorial. I would at least recommend that you set up your Excel toolbar like this. It's gonna make you so much faster and you're more than welcome to download this sheet as well. I again use this in all of my models and it saves me a ton of time because I don't have to look up the colors. I don't have to look up the specific formatting code and I can make a new sheet very quickly. So that is it for this video. If you would like to see more Excel content, can you please leave a comment below because I'm not 100% sure. But I do appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.